What's up, everyone? Happy Tuesday, January 11th, 2022. Man, this year's flying by already. 11 days in, I felt like I just popped the champagne last night. But hey, sorry I missed you guys yesterday. We had a team meeting. It went long. It was great. It was really, really good, really productive. It was nice to see the whole team here. We are ready to kick some ass. Yeah, I feel great today. Do you guys feel great? I feel great. I feel great. Hey, the 10-year Treasury bond yesterday hit a two-year high, 1.783%. Today, we have a slight downtick, 1.767%. Yes, that's 1.767%, like a Boeing 767. We have a 30-year fixed national average. No change from yesterday, 3.6%. Remember back in December, you know, we give the rate updates every time we do the show, 3.04, just three weeks ago, 3.64. We were trying to lock rates for a client buying a new construction. Guess what? Rates for February, 3.8. Had to pay for a 3.7. They'll pay you for a 3.8. But rates are going up, and it's going to be interesting to see how the market shifts. Okay. Team meeting yesterday went really great. Great to see everybody, but we did a team lunch as well. And if you're ever in Henderson, Nevada, it's Nevada, not Nevada, it's Nevada, okay? If you're ever in Henderson, which is just southeast of Las Vegas, great community, um, there's a little Jewish deli. It's a Jewish deli. It's called Weiss, W-E-I-S-S. -S. Portions are phenomenal. Prices are reasonable. Great cup of joe. Anyways, if you're ever in Henderson, go check out Weiss Deli, Jewish, kosher, everything's great. Check it out. It's a good spot. I also wanted to thank Gianna, little G. She uh, just turned 16. She's a good family friend of ours, his daughter. And she got a driver's license, got a car. She wanted to enter the workforce. So she's helping us out around the office Mondays and Wednesdays doing uh, administrative work and documents and stuff like that, helping with some of our marketing. And then every other Sunday, she's cleaning the office and she did a phenomenal job. She did so good. I mean, look at this place. It looks so good. You should see all the other rooms. It looks great. Thank you, Gianna. You are the best. Okay, let's get on with today's topic. So you're looking to purchase a new construction home, a new build, or you know, new construction from a builder like KB Home, Lennar, Toll Brothers, etc. There's boutique builders all across the country, but those are some of the big ones. And typically, when you go into their sales office, make sure you go with an agent because their contracts are on builder contracts. And believe me, these contracts are for the builder and the benefit of the builder, not the buyer, which could be you. It's for the builder. That sales agent there, he's going to look real smooth. He's going to talk real smooth. But who's he employed by? You or the builder? He's employed by the builder because he's working to get the best deal for the builder. So that's why you need a competent agent. Okay, Get a competent agent who is used and has experience in new construction and dealing with these guys that work for the builder. Okay, So this is a real world example I used uh, last year that happened, a real transaction that happened. And they opted to go with uh, the builder's financing incentive of giving them $8,000. But, you know, in this example I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use real numbers, okay? I'm going to use an estimated net sheet for what he could have got with our preferred lender, Right Choice Lending. And I'm going to use the real numbers that he got with the builder's financing company. I'm not going to say the name or their title company, but they did purchase this home from Lennar, okay? And they have their own title company, their own lender, etc. So let's get into it. So, for example, in a, in a real estate transaction in our market, the seller will pay for the transfer tax. And um, what happened here is the buyer ended up paying for the transfer tax. So, again, use a competent agent. Make sure you guys are looking at those contracts. So, this, this again, this example happened last year. And, of course, when you're buying a home or you're buying anything, for that matter, you, you want to save money. Of course, right? If you can purchase a home with less money, that's a good deal, right? Well, not exactly and not always and i want to break this down for you guys of how this went so you can be educated on this process again this was a new lennar build the base model of the home was three hundred seventeen thousand nine hundred sixty five dollars i ran the numbers based off of what right choice and driggs title who we use for 
uh, our title and escrow company, Tiani Ogden. Shout out to you. You're phenomenal. I love the new construction home you guys just built. It looks so gorgeous. I'm so proud and happy for you guys. Okay. Anyways, I ran these numbers based off the rates, Driggs, Charges, and Right Choice Lending, who's our preferred lender. And I ran this net sheet at $320,000. Okay. Lennar's promo that they were offering a buyer to use their finance company was $8,000 credit towards your closing cost if you use their lender. And it sounds like a good deal, right? For face, off the face, it sounds like a good idea. Now this financing program was FHA, which was 3.5% down and a $1,000 lot fee for the reservation of the lot before they built the home and your closing cost. So what they don't tell you is that when you go with their financing company, you will use their title company and their appraisal company, and they're very firm on that because if you don't, they won't give you the $8,000. You also not get a random licensed appraiser from the pool that they draw from. You're gonna get one of theirs that they're gonna use from a company they choose because it's their financing. They play by their rules, not our rules, okay? So this is, the reason why they do this is to ensure that the homes they build continue to appreciate as they sell more, because if they have a private um, a, a different appraiser come in who's not in with those companies, what they're going to do is one could come in low and that can mess up the rest of the appraisals. So what they do is they get their appraisal company out there, somebody that they're in cahoots with, and they sell these for higher prices and it appreciates. And then when they move on to the next phase of the homes, they can sell them at a higher price. Okay, great. We know how that works. We get it. Capitalism. But here's where it becomes interesting. When you look at the Alta settlement statement, which is a breakdown of the debits and credits between the buyer and seller, who gets what, who's paying what, you start to see what I call, quote unquote, junk fees from the title company. The builder's mortgage company also charges a 1% loan origination fee. I've discussed this in my other videos to find a lender that you're comfortable with who does not charge loan origination fees of 1%, you're just throwing away money. Okay, the way that lenders get paid is when they sell your loan to Fannie or Freddie, they get paid a fee on that loan amount, typically about 2%. So if they're charging you 1% and all these junk fees, that's just money directly in their pocket. Find a lender who's going to sell the loan and that's what they make. You should try to get in a home for as little as possible if the terms and rate is good for you. Okay, so here's the breakdown with Right Choice Financing, our preferred partner. The house price of $320,000 a 3.5% down payment of 320 is 11,200. Uh, the loan amount rate for this mortgage would have been very close to 3.2% at this time. Uh, the mortgage insurance premium or MIP $5,404, which they build into the loan uh, because you have less than 20% down and prepaid costs, which is your insurance, taxes, interest. Now the builder financing did three months of insurance, homeowners insurance, and typically it's 14 months on resales. So for this net sheet, I changed the numbers for three months of insurance to match the builder's financing, which came out to $1,924 total. Keep in mind, these net sheets that we run are estimates because dates can change, prorations can change, taxes, etc., can change. So keep in mind that these estimates are usually a little bit higher than what comes back as the actual figures that you're going to close with. And it's always done in the worst case scenario. So that way when the numbers come in lower, everyone's happy. If the numbers come in at that rate, nobody's surprised. Okay, so the lender fees, again, our lender doesn't charge loan origination fees. They charge you for the appraisal, which is $475 in most cases, and $42 for your credit report for a total of $517. You also have, when you're closing, your title and escrow fees, which is title insurance for sellers, for the owners, and for the lender's financing. You also have your escrow, notary, etc., which came out to an estimate of $1,460 and some change. As we told you, we have the lot reservation of $1,000, bringing a total cost of closing for closing costs, builder lot, uh, the lot reservation, and for your down payment of $16,102, giving you an estimated monthly payment, including the HOA of $60 a month, for $1,933.56. Now let's talk about the builder's terms and financing. So they give you the $8,000 credit off the top, to be used towards your closing costs. And that's their shtick. 
That's how they bring you in. That's how they get you to go on their terms. So the client in this uh, real world example that actually happened last year, they made a $3,543 deposit and the additional $1,000 lot reservation deposit. Uh, the Lennar finance company that they ended up opting to go with charges 1% of the loan amount. In this case, it was $3,121.55. Um, other junk fees like commitment fees, courier fees, they charge a $650 underwriting fee. The appraisal fee, $475, which we know. Um, they had to pay the MIP up front to HUD of $5,368 and some change instead of having that built into the mortgage. You also have to pay MIP for several years, which is included in your mortgage of payment. When you have 20% equity, you can refinance and get out of your MIP or pay off the remaining balance. Or if you put 20% down or more on a home, you do not have mortgage insurance premium. Um, this finance company also charged a $250 notary fee, which should be $150, but they nickel and dime you there and hundred bucks, guys, that adds up. But here is a pro tip. Go sign your documents in person with the title company, escrow company, and that way you will get reimbursed for that mobile notary fee. Okay, so if you can, you have the means to, or if you want to pay for the convenience and then coming to you, it's completely up to you. But if you do want to save the 150 or in this case, $250, if they would have signed in person, they would not have had to pay that or they would have been reimbursed. Okay, you also have your property taxes and homeowners insurance. And as we get into the title escrow fees, keep in mind that this is their title company and most builders own their own title company. Like I said, they have several junk fees, but what they do here in, in, a, in a normal real estate transaction, the buyer pays for the lender's title policy because the buyer is obtaining the financing, which makes sense. Of course, if you're buying cash, this is waived. You don't need a lender's title policy because no one's lending you money. But this builder made the buyer pay for the owner's title policy, which typically the seller will pay for because they were the owner at that time. So they'll typically pay for their own title policy. Okay, they also hit you at the very end for a $495 builder fee for whatever reason. And just remember that $8,000 they gave you, it's almost all washed up in these junk fees they charge you. Okay, you also have your transfer tax. Um, again, this is typically paid for by the seller, but in this case, it's written on the builder's contracts that the buyer pays for this. That is $1,621.80. So here in this real client example, this is how the numbers broke down. My client paid the builder $13,769.84 to close on the property. If you add that 8,000 that they quote unquote gave you to your closing cost, your closing cost actually could have been around with this company, $21,769.84. Compare that to what it would have cost you with our preferred lender, your total closing cost, including down payment, escrow fees, etc., would have been $16,102. Okay, so you're like, Jordan, dude, I saved $2,300. That's a good deal, right? So yes, the builder did save you $2,332.16. You, you came in with that amount of money less to be able to purchase the home and get into the home. But let's look at the terms of the mortgage note. The buyer received a rate of 4.275 from the builder with the monthly pity, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, pity, discussed that before, payment of, here's a monthly payment including the HOA, $2,225, that includes the HOA fees monthly. Um, this rate, the particular, the rate that this particular buyer could have received at that time with, with our preferred lending partner was 3.25% with an estimated pity, again, pity's principal, interest, taxes, insurance, uh, and this also includes the HOA, of $1,933.56. So the difference of the payment per month is roughly $292, okay? So remember that $2,332 the builder saved you when you purchased the home. Well, you're gonna pay that back in the very first year of home ownership in the form of a higher interest and mortgage payment. Okay, you're gonna pay that back in the very first year. Over the first 12 months of your mortgage, you will pay an additional $3,504. So I have to ask you guys, was saving that $2,332 upfront worth it? 
To me, it's not. But sometimes, you know, you might need to say that to be able to get in the house. I get that. But let's multiply that over 30 years because that is the term of this mortgage. Over 30 years, that's an additional $105,120 that you'll be paying. But that builder gave you $8,000, which really only saved you $2,332 in the first place. But that's a shtick again. So was it worth it? Let me know what you guys think. So the moral of this story, guys, use if, if you're considering new construction, use a competent agent when considering new construction. Use somebody who's gonna understand what's written in that contract, how it's written, how their title company operates. If they go that route, you make sure your agent is presenting this information to you, okay? Ensure you know what the fees are that will be charged and run the numbers like this to see if those incentives are worth it. And keep in mind, guys, when you buy new construction, you have a dirt backyard and they give you usually one year to landscape it and turn it into something. And typically you don't have window coverings. You just have your windows. So you got to buy blinds, shades, whatever. And those can be pretty expensive if you have more than one window in your house. Right. And so there's other costs you also have to carry with home ownership. You know, typically your garage isn't painted, things like that. So. Keep all that in mind. I hope you guys found the information useful. Is buyer incentive financing, buyer financing incentives from the home builder, is that good for you? Well, it could be. You just have to look at the terms. If they could have gave him the same rate, this buyer, the same rate that our lender could have gave him, it, and they didn't have to spend $100,000 more over the course of 30 years, maybe it would have been a good deal. But guess what? There's no such thing as a free lunch. So when you guys hear these kind of things, just make sure you're doing your due diligence and figuring it out, okay? So please like, subscribe, leave a comment about what you think about this. Uh, we'll have another one tomorrow. Hope everyone's well. Again, if you haven't got my books yet, they're free. Okay, get my books. You can get them for free on my website jordandove.com forward slash books. I've got a buying book and selling book all about real estate and the transaction. So go to jordandove.com forward slash books. They're yours for free. Uh, send me an email, jordan at doveandassociates.com. If you have direct questions you would like to ask or if you need help finding a quality agent. Also, um, follow me on social media, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.